All right, 132 folks. Uh, um, what I want to talk about here is Unit 2, and this is going to be the first half of the unit. It's going to be Chapter 17. It's kind of ex really important. If you've already looked at the document review, when I was talking about with that, it's kind of important this goes along with it and with what is currently happening in the news, what's currently happening in culture, because we're looking at post-reconstruction. All right? Uh, as I said in the doc review piece, um, the Republican Party sold out uh, um, the black vote in the South. They, they sold out uh, the freedmen just to retain the uh, presidency for one more term. And as such, what happens is the South is going to be redeemed, redeemed, not in a religious way, but redeemed um, in very much the same way because it's going to be restored to the way it used to be before the Civil War, before the North interfered. The only thing they can't do is legally institute slavery. Not legally, but they can um, take away the rights. They're going to disenfranchise the black vote. They're going to do it by legal means. They're going to do it by illegal means. They're going to do it um, by the law and the creation of what they call the Mississippi plan, because Mississippi starts it. And the idea being is, uh, the term is, is negrophobia. Um, a fear of the black vote, a fear of the black people, and the only way to control them, the only way to, uh, to deal with them is to keep them in their place. And to keep them in, in their place is going to be to take away the vote, take away their power, because there's power in politics. Folks, when the freedmen become freedmen, many of them realize that uh, there is power in reading, there is power in writing, there is power in education, and so they're going to seek out the education. Um, among those are the gentlemen I talked about, Booker T. Washington, who is going to seek out um, his education, is going to seek out the idea that he can be informed, he can be an educated, and he can lead the others. Um, it's a good idea because what we're going to start facing in the South via the Mississippi plan is uh, things like the grandfather clause, things like the literacy test, things like the poll tax. The idea being is um, to strip the vote away from the unqualified people. And unqualified, I just don't mean black folks. Uh, I mean uh, poor white folks who might vote opposite of what the Democrats want them to vote. Um, they're going to control to make sure the right kind of people get to vote. Um, who are the right kind of people, you say? Well, the ones that are going to vote the way they want them to. So um, if they're working for power, they're working for the wealthy, well, they're sure as heck not going to want the, the poor, the disenfranchised, the, the black, the whatever to vote. So they're going to make a, a way to strip them of their rights. Uh, one of those great things that they talk about is a literacy test. I don't mean it's great, but it's one of their methods. Think about the fact that I can give you here. Poof, um, take this verse from the King James Bible and read it. Now, explain it to me to uh, my satisfaction. If you've ever read the King James Bible, sometimes that is, I mean, it's recursive at best. It's Old English, Middle English at best, and so it can be a little bit difficult to understand. Can you explain to me something to my satisfaction if I don't want to be satisfied? No, you, you can't. Okay, you can't. And so what's going to happen is they're going to strip the vote. When they can't do it legally, they're going to strip it by force. They're going to strip it with military fashion. Folks, this is the rise of the KKK. This is when you're going to see the Ku Klux Klan. This is when you're going to see um, the Southern laws, the, the Southern or lack of laws backing what's happening. And so we start to see the invention of the Jim Crow laws. And Jim Crow is actually a character. He's actually a minstrel character based on some of the worst southern archetypes of a of a black lazy slave that you can see and the idea is they're going to trot him out as his character and they're going to create these so-called jim crow laws to go ahead and keep the southern freedmen disenfranchised they're going to make sure they can't vote they can't hold land in certain areas they can't hold wealth in certain areas and so we're going to see a lot of shifting this is when we see the rise of booker t washington I want you to remember Booker T. Booker T. Washington. He's going to go ahead and give the Atlanta speech. Um, you'll notice it's called the Atlanta Compromise, and that's because W.E.B. Du Bois, not Du Bois, but Du Bois, um, is going to speak out against Booker T. Washington because they have opposing ideals. Booker T. thinks practical knowledge is the way for the black man to gain freedom, to gain power. Okay, he thinks, hey, listen, teach them to build, teach them to create, teach them to make, teach them to grow, teach them to be self-sufficient, 
and they can earn their place. And once they earn their place, they're going to earn the economic power and they can't be denied. And, and Dubois is going to say, no, 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 no. What we need is we need ceaseless agitation, that we need to be in their face, that we need to give every black man the same education as every learned white man. If the learned white men are going to college and learning literature, they're learning Greek, they're learning all, all these old civic standards, well, then the black man should be learning the same thing. And the problem is, is they're diametrically opposed. Um, Dubois is not from the South, folks. Um, Booker T. Washington is from the South. And in the South, Booker T. is saying, listen, uh, you get a, a black man in a white man's face, a white man of power. Uh, what's going to happen? It's not going to end well. It's not like it is up north in some cases. And Dubois is somebody who is from the middle. He's from the north, and he's saying, listen, you know, um, we need to be in their face all the time until they, we force them to listen. I know that relates to what's happening right now. And, you know, it's tough to decide who's right. What we are going to see is we're going to see some divisive laws. And what's going to happen is while they still have some rights, we're going to see a lawsuit get to court. It's going to be the Plessy v. Ferguson. And Plessy v. Ferguson is kind of important because what it does is it brings to court the idea where a man of color is going to say, listen, I paid for a ride on this train. He's going to be riding in first class. And when they cross the state line, he's going to be forced to move to the colored car. He's going to say, I paid for a first class ride. I paid for my first class ticket. I started in first class. I need to stay in first class. They're going to force him to change because the laws where he's at allow for this split. They allow for this discrimination. And what will happen, this will end up in the Supreme Court. And Plessy v. Ferguson is going to set the new standard for the nation. It's going to say, listen, no problem with separation. As long as the compartments are separate but equal, as long as the circumstances are separate equal, then he, we're, we're not tramping on anybody's rights. And so this separate but equal becomes the byline. It becomes the standard law. Um, that's where in the 20s, the 30s, the 40s, and the 50s, we start to get see the colored theaters versus the white theaters, the colored drinking fountain versus a white drinking fountain. We start to see this color separation um, by law, and it's hugely important. That becomes the standard. The other thing that's really happening at this point is we're looking at uh, the move west. We're looking at what becomes the, the call for manifest destiny. And manifest destiny is going to be the call um, of a large part of uh, the east. The idea being is they want to stretch westward. We have this vast continent beyond the Mississippi and we there, there's nobody living there and so we should all move west we should all go out there and when I say nobody is living there well gosh yeah the Native Americans are there what happens is we shift from shooting each other in the Civil War and we take these brand new weapons these grand brand new great ways of killing and we shift them to killing the Native Americans we shift them to driving off the Native Americans because manifest destiny says it's our God-given right as European, uh, basically white folks, that we should rule this continent from end to end. And so we start to oppress. We start to push. It's going to be a further westward movement. If we're going to be start uh, this homesteading movement that we started before, we start giving people land if they're willing to improve the land. We push outwards. And, and this westward movement is going to be greatly hastened by the discovery of gold uh, and silver in the West. It's going to be see the blossoming of California. It's going to see the blossoming of new states. Um, and it, it's going to be enhanced by some of the other things that are happening at that particular point. And so it's huge that we start to look at this because what's going to happen is the American West is looked at as one of the great democratizing uh, movements. Uh, people, as they move westward, are more equal. Women are more equal. Men are more equal. Um, but as they push farther westward, eventually what's going to happen is... Um, a guy named Frederick Jackson Turner, once we hit that west coast, he's going to say, listen, frontiers closed, frontier expansion is over with, equality is uh, over with. What we're going to look at is his frontier thesis is going to talk about uh, the end of the American frontier. Now, there's also a few things in there about the ghost dance movement and about the oppression of the Native Americans. I'm going to leave that to you to look at, and I'm going to go ahead and pick up in the next chapter.